Disney Travel Podcast with the latest Disney Travel news. We are your hosts. I am Mike Bellabratic. And I'm Amelia Bellabratic. And today, news about many restaurants reopening and a new walkway for Disneyland guests. Yes, we don't necessarily have a foodie guide this week. Shocker, no foodie guide in the show this week. But we're still talking about food. Because what would an episode be without food? Yep. There are two, I would say, of our favorite restaurants at Walt Disney World. Among our favorites, right? Both of them have reopening dates and then some other news. So let's dive right in. The big question is, when is Victorian Alberts reopening at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort? The answer, Thursday, July 28th, 2022. Yeah, we've been waiting for this one. Not something you do every day, but if you haven't visited Victorian Alberts, it is an experience in and of itself. Yes, so you can make reservations starting June 20th. Yep, starting June 20th, book your dinner. And they've got some new enhanced flavors. Of and they, course they have. They've reimagined the whole restaurant. Of course they have. So they've probably freshened it up. Did you like how it was It before? was very Victorian. It's still Victorian. So it had a harp. I They didn't I mention it. the harpist. Did you like having the harpist I in the main I liked it. Room? It made it feel very fancy. Yeah. So they're saying there's new murals and wall coverings that showcase timeless elegance and subtle inspiration of a whimsical garden. So maybe they... I didn't really particularly notice a garden theme before. It just looked like a sort of fancy, stuffy restaurant with a harpist playing. We were in the main room, not the chef's table or those other rooms. So if you want to, of course, do that, you can do the private Queen Victoria's room or the chef's table where the chefs work right in front of you. Yeah, but so far we've always been in the main room. Yes, for even more money. (laughs) It's not an inexpensive experience, but it is a great experience. There's Real, huge. If you like wine, there is a world-class wine selection with over 500 bottles yeah. of top-end stuff. And you can have all of that. Yeah, we do the pairing, and let me tell you, you drink a lot of wine in the pairing. For the and, low, low price of thousands of dollars. Yes, and there are also delicious non-alcoholic cocktails that can be paired okay. as well. You can speak these to those. These are excellent. I would argue sometimes you might just want to opt for one of these because they don't contain alcohol if you've already had like five glasses of wine. Yeah, so if someone's expecting or just doesn't drink or is a... No, there's an age limit, 10 or over. And Amelia was young when we did that pairing. I think you were 10. And I have to say, I made it a point of sampling all the mocktails that they served to you, and they were exceptional. I even said to them, you should make some of these cocktails, right? Sampling or stealing? Just sampling. I did not steal them. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, so on the new tasting menu, it changes a lot, even for our dinner. They call you ahead of time. They ask you what you like. In our party, all three of us had slightly different menus. So, But when it reopens, you'll be able to sample dishes such as Colorado lamb with pickled blueberry and violet mustard, line-caught turbot with fennel fondue and pernod beurre blanc, and... If you love beef. I can't pronounce that. <laughs> they have the finest, the Wagyu A5 Miyazaki, and that is with romescu sauce and potato roasties. Now, these are small tasting menu portions, <laughs> let me tell you. Because you see the first one, and you're like, oh, this is so, I will, like, this is so tiny. I'm not going to get full at all. But trust me, by the 10th one, yeah, on our are going to be full. On our last visit, it was supposed to be nine courses, plus dessert and stuff. Yeah. They ended up giving us 12. So they do things like that. They sort of ad lib and they, mm-hmm. and your server will say, you know, the chef has uh, added this in. So I he, literally couldn't even eat the dessert the last time. I was yeah. so full. And then there was like the pre-dessert, the Ugh. blue cheese thing that w- w- was sort of dessertish, but not really dessert. And, I hid. Yeah. And then speaking of which, if you like chocolate, they do have a great spectrum of chocolate, as they call it. It's really great. They have specially sourced chocolates, and there's buttermilk and Grand Marnier and vanilla. They bring out a little... These are exceptional. We had to take them to go because we were so full by that time. So, there, yeah, there are certain ones that you can eat yeah. in the restaurant, but I personally found the ones that we were able to take to go phenomenal. Yeah, even they a day said later. you cannot take these to go, and my assumption we didn't ask would be that they contain things that can spoil. So yeah. they would not want to be, they wouldn't want you getting sick <laughs> from food poisoning because it was out of their control. So fair yeah. enough. But let me tell you, there was no, 
shortage of selection of things to take in a little to-go box for the little chocolates. Yes. So, new menu. It's reopening, as Amelia said, on Thursday, July 28th. And there is a reminder about the dress code. So, the dress code, it's a very upscale dining establishment. It's more upscale than a golf course. So, it's a very advanced dress code. No jeans, tank tops, like... Yeah, they're very, they say semi-formal to formal. So men have to wear a blazer. And if you don't have one, they'll give you one to wear and make you wear it. So you cannot just come straight from the pool to your dining reservation. Be sure you pay attention to the dress code because they do enforce it. And you know what? It's all part of the atmosphere. One thing I love about it is when you get in there, there's no windows or anything. And that's by design. Yeah, I like that there's no windows. You really do feel completely shut off from the You're not at Disney World anymore. Yeah, you're not at Disney World. It's calm, relaxing. But it it is nice to have a break, so... Yeah, so super fun to do. It's a real special experience. Opening, as we said, July 28th. Start booking as of June 20th if you want to go for the reopening and check it yeah. out. And now. Next is something that we like arguably more, in my at least in my opinion. The Hoop Dee Doo Review is reopening on Thursday, June 23rd. Yes, this is, I believe, the longest running show at Walt Disney World. We started going there in the 1970s. And deservedly so. Yeah, it is a great stage show. They have apparently changed it a little bit, but not too much, the show. But we're talking about the food. And I was wondering if they were going to change the food. And I don't believe they have. So there is an updated version of the show. It is a family-style feast. So they bring the stuff to your table. It takes place at Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground inside Pioneer Hall, which is conveniently located by the boat docks if you're taking the boat there. And the Pioneer Hall players put on a great show, let me tell you. I don't even want to tell anything about the show, about how it starts or how it happens. You can look it up if you want, but it's really fun if you don't know how it goes. But let's talk about the food. It has historically some of the best comfort food at Walt Disney World. Yes, it has. First off, it has the home style mashed potatoes and they go perfectly with either the fried chicken or the pork ribs, which I personally opt for. And then they also have lots of good signs with cowboy beans. And apparently you can't have barbecue without beans. Let's start with something you that I really care about. It is bottomless drinks. <laughs> It is bottomless drinks for both non-alcoholic and alcoholic. It's an all-you-care-to-enjoy feast. And if you're over 21, they have red and white sangria, draft beer, and wine, all included. Then it starts with the hoop salad, which is the signature hoop vinaigrette topped with sharp white cheddar, cucumbers, and tomatoes. I'm not a big salad fan, but I don't mind sampling it. It's not bad. I like Caesar and only Caesar. You love the next one, the house made Cornbread. This is the best cornbread I've ever tasted. And I think I'd go so far as to say this is the best dish that the Hoop to Do has. And they have some amazing dishes. So And it doesn't help the that there's honey butter melting all over it. Props to the cornbread. There's also really good creamy coleslaw as a side that for, you know, your main course arrives at your table. But then the main course, as Amelia said, now pecan smoked barbecue pork ribs with barbecue sauce. They're pretty good. Like, not the greatest ribs I've ever had, but definitely good. They're good. They're good. They're not bad at all. They're good ribs. You'll like them if you like ribs. They go really well if you put them in a cornbread sandwich. Yeah, you could try (laughs) fun stuff like that. I have tried it. It's very good. I recommend it. But then the next, what I would call legendary, is their fried chicken. I mean, it's a personal opinion. You you even like it and you're not a huge fried chicken fan. So understatement of the century. So their fried chicken and ribs are excellent. And I always used to compare them to the Spirit of Aloha Lua, which had a similar dinner, but was not very good. The chefs preparing the food for the hoop de doo are really good. Great stuff. Yes. And And then those side dishes, the cornbread crusted macaroni and cheese. I only like this because of the cornbread. Yeah, that's the ultimate comfort food. And as Amelia said, the homestyle mashed potatoes, also good. I mean, it all goes really well together. It's that kind of meal. So definitely highly recommend the Hoop Dee Doo Review. If you've never done it, what are you waiting for? Well, don't forget the dessert. They also have... Oh, the grand finale. See, I'm more of a beginning and end. The dinner's fine, but the cornbread and the dessert is really where it's at, in my personal opinion. So they have the longtime favorite, which is Ma's famous strawberry shortcake, and that's topped with whipped cream and strawberries, which is quite good, even though it sounds like just any strawberry shortcake. This has been a staple there, and this, you know, you have it as sort of the big grand finale of the show okay, it sounds like just any strawberry shortcake but don't be fooled yeah don't it's be fooled. quite good we're gonna post some pictures of it so check out the blog 
and our social media at 1923 Main Street to see it for yourself and get your taste buds and they also have ready. A, yes, they also do have a couple new adult drink options, although I believe these are extra. Yeah, if you don't want the free stuff in the bottomless drinks. If you don't want the free alcohol, there is paid the alcohol. Stuff, they now have new paid alcohol. So they have a giddy up cocktail, which is vodka, lemonade, and fresh brewed iced tea. And there's lots of craft beers from many companies. Check them all out. If you want to see exactly what they have, I will list them in the blog post and in the show notes. But yeah, hoop to do is, I would say, of reasonable cost. It's not cheap, cheap, but it's not Victorian albums. Yeah, it's a dinner theater, right? It's a big show. It's lots of fun. There's different seating. If you if you can swing it, yeah, I would sit on the floor as close to the stage as you can. If you're a small party, you may get put together with another group. It all depends. But you know what? Really, really good time. Highly recommended. Highly underrated show. Definitely go there. All right, there's more coming back. This one doesn't involve food. But there are Moana-inspired photo ops around Walt Disney World. New photo opportunities as part of PhotoPass service. Yes. Now, where do these take place? Well, they're, Not just anywhere. There's some at Animal Kingdom where you can snap a magic shot with Hey Hey, and this is by visiting the photographer location, which is the closest one to the Tree of Life on Discovery Island. And then again at Magic Kingdom Park, the Disney PhotoPass studio in Sir Mickey's at Fantasyland. Sir Mickey's is right just as you walk through the castle on your right. Yes, and again, Hey Hey is making an appearance, but along with a variety of other Moana friends. Ooh, secret friends they don't announce. Yeah, I know. Who's going to who's gonna show up? Is it always going to be the same? We don't know. And for a Pua magic shot, you can visit the photographer station near the entrance to Adventureland um, from Main Street, USA to capture a photo with Pua, who's like the precious little pig that I just adore. And over at Disney Springs, if you have not gone to the PhotoPass studio at Disney Springs, it's, Why? it's pretty cool. People don't really know about it. It's near I recommend where it. the Cherry Tree Lane dress shop is and all that sort of stuff. And they have some new Moana-themed backdrops. Mm-hmm. And we have a tip for you. PhotoPass photographers can conjure up Maui's fish hook for you to hold in their photos. So be sure to ask for that. And then also there are some new Disney PhotoPass oh, lenses. Oh, I love the PhotoPass lenses in the <sighs> app. We had a lot of fun with those. You had a lot of fun with those. <laughs> yeah, I should post some of those. No. There's some classic. Do of not. Me. Post some of them. Some classic, especially my genie one. My no. My personal favorite. This will haunt your nightmares. <laughs> anyway, so there are some new lenses available on the app. Next up, the minivans return on June 29th. Yeah, the minivans are back. So if you want a nice, safe, sort of Disney-inspired, Disney-themed way to travel, check out the minivans. Um, they're not super cheap. But they do have access to special drop-off locations that only they can access. Yeah, so that is a bonus. So, so and... That means closer to the gates, yeah, if, right? So if you really hate walking or your children yeah. really hate walking, maybe So they can court. go a little bit further than a let's say a Lyft or Uber can go. So mm-hmm. you do get a little bit of a perk if you want to take a minivan. It's still fun. I think if your kids really enjoy the themed experience, I'd give it a shot. And now finally, following up on a story we talked about a few weeks ago over in Disneyland Resort. Yes, Disney is set on making all of their hotels have walkways but the new walkway to disney's california adventure park from the paradise pier hotel is now open yeah it's now open and i've got to say it again why are they calling it paradise pier hotel when paradise pier is now gone doesn't exist i don't know it's now pixar pier excuse me i'm not bob chapek do not contact me so (laughs) i think we have some disconnect in our creative here yes now this one you do have to cross the street i believe to get to it's not as quite as direct as the park entrance from the Grand Californian. But still, yeah. if you're staying at Paradise Pier, this will be a thankful new little perk yeah. for you. No need to wait for any other transportation, which can always take longer than you yeah. think. It's not bad at Disneyland, right? It's not like Walt Disney World. There's That's really true. no transportation involved. But any steps saved, as I know you appreciate, yes. are welcome. I don't like walking, which I realize is very yeah. contradictory. because to the, whole go- Disney <laughs> to the whole Disney yeah. experience. I'm not a big walking person, you know? It's just not All my right. thing. Yes, I do know. All right, everyone. Thank you for listening. You are now caught up on this week's news. Follow along at 1923 Main Street on social media. Check out our blog posts. And we love hearing from you. And we thank you for listening to the show every week. We'll see you again next week. Have a magical day. Bye-bye.